Mechanics must be fast. Open, put, put into the guide, close. <laughs> oh. And of course, I couldn't finish this video without showing you my latest version of a toilet that I did. So we got a nice toilet seat. A good finish. Ah! Here's the composting toilet. Which will take with sawdust all the poo and we to the garden. So this is for the legs, this is the two legs are going to sit here. So I'm planning that, you know, nothing is interfering. But I also want to add a little bit of curvature. So, you know, it's like interesting, you know, so it's not just a... So when you, it's all about beauty. You come in and it looks beautiful. It's varnished or it's painted and it's got a bit of a curve and it just, you know, you, even experience in the toilet should be beautiful. This is what I believe. I supported this, obviously it'd be easier with two people, but I've supported it with uh, a little piece of wood. I managed to put one screw, just by holding it like this, and I'm putting the second screw, and then it will be solid. Four screws. <laughs> this head is ripping, that's why it's sliding. So yeah, I'm gonna put two more screws. And now, Another bracket here. Yeah, I'll put brackets here, brackets here, and then I'll put a bracket to the floor with the first tile, tile drill bit, a hole, and then a concrete drill bit, and then I'm gonna put the plugs the same way. And basically, this is the method that we're gonna be setting up our bus, our school bus one day. Basic carpentry, which I have no idea about, but I'm just figuring out as I go. Really, and I wish you to do the same. Do not fear. It's not that difficult. So this is good. So now I think the next step would be to plan all the little other pieces. Yeah, in fact I can cut the texture already now. And then set up this piece, make it nice and strong, set up uh, this piece on a hinge, make it nice and strong, and then set up this piece and make it nice and strong. So, now that it's planned, so I'm going to get it, there's going to be a gap there next to the wall which will cover, so I'm going to start in the corner here, because that's my easiest way, where it's touching, touching, and then I just work my way that way. But I'm going to pretend, because there's a bar underneath here, and that's my line where I want it. So I want it halfway between the two or maybe even a bit more here. So like a centimeter, yeah? A centimeter over on this side because one be moving and the other at least an inch-ish, you know? So my line is here, I draw it more or less, yeah? And then I move one centimeter over and one centimeter over here draw underneath how much to cut off at an angle um, and I'm going to basically draw um, underneath here yeah, the curvature I mean I just need to get it parallel to this giving you the gist of it that's the thinking so now I'm going to make a leg a leg here yeah for a support for the same way leg there then then this part is solid this will be sticking over connected um, you're probably wondering, but this is not 45, so I'll bend this angle. I'll bend it until I can get it in there. Um, but before I bend it, I'll probably, because I can't get my drill in there, so I'll open it up. Well, look, I need to cut it first. Once I cut it, then I'm gonna mark my holes here, here. I'm gonna mark my holes there, there. Then I'll screw it all in once this angle is open, and then I'll bend with the corner here. And then here, I'll set up the angle as well in the same way and it will be nice and strong on that side and carry on basics of carpentry or oh, DIY okay, so I've cut it and I see it's actually and um, no, it's perfect there okay so got my angle and then I can straighten my corner bit 
Okay, I'll probably be able to put only one screw, maybe at an angle, another screw. But you also get flat corners that you can put one on top and one underneath. Uh, I've marked where it needs to be in relation to the wood, because now I'm going to take all of this off. And I got my marking. So let's just get a pilot hole in there. There's my marking, so now my wood starts here. Finished corner. Okay, so I see that there's my cutting line. The block's moved away, so I'll, you know, when I screw it, I just need to put a bit of pressure to give it what, one centimeter, and I'm gonna screw it in. But I can't screw it in yet because I need to cut this apart. So I push it down, so this can go down. And then I can mark, make, mark to the bottom. It's 40 centimeters, exactly. Cut myself a stick of 40 centimeters. It's not this. And boom, I'll mount it here, and then I've already got a support for my seat. And the thing is coming along. And this is the first time I've done something like this, so that's really nice. So I've realized something. Because I'm going to have a nice edge in here, which will flow with the form that I've cut. So, my, so I'll be going with these woods and basically placing them you know, in line with this whole thing. Just like that. A few, especially on the curves, tight curves, I'll put, probably put one more here. A lesson from here should have gone right to the end because that will act as a stopper here. Yeah, so I'll have to maybe make a little piece, but you know, just a lesson. So more pieces on the corner. So one here, and here you can go loose. I mean less. Um, but basically what I want to show you, it's in line and it's parallel to the line of the curve. And then you will dress it because there will be wood shavings here and my buckets here and this will be going up and down. The reason that I hold these when I cut it, because when it comes to the end, if you don't hold it, it will break the, the end off. Okay, so that's the part that's going to go up. So that's something I need to figure out. Probably will have to have a, a cut here now that I'm thinking about it, because the hinge can't be here. The hinge has to be at this part. You know, I've got a couple of screws, so I'll start mounting this array. And then this leg, remember I showed you? It just needs to be get to one centimeter. Yeah? So I'll get it up and over. Yeah? That's it! This screw doesn't want to come out, I'll try it. I know some of you may think I'm mad. But really, it is the only option. Which means there is a slight gap here because here it's in the corner. And if you remember, it was touching the wall. I mean, I could try and ooze that, but all the edging is going to fix it up. My main point is to get this piece of wood in line here. First get it in line and then put my screws in. Something else, I need to put these screws not at an angle but straight down because it needs to sink. Because I'm going to put a second piece of wood here so I can't have things sticking out. That corner, the wall is a bit skewed. So I'm just going to trim a little bit, which will get, which will get this little micro step in and you know, just bring the whole thing a little bit tidier.
Yeah, that's it. Also, give it like a little gap so this thing does not get stuck. And you can always sand it, and we will. I see it's sand. It's perfect, that's what I need. I know why it lifts, it's a thin wood. And it's just warps. So if you are going to be cutting double wood out of thin wood like me, but I do prefer that you use a one inch ply or if you get 22 millimeters. But in my case, I didn't have it, this is what I had. So I'm gonna do a double sandwich. So it will be much stronger um, creating the one inch plywood or in my case, 20 millimeters. Yeah, there, it's all, it's all matched. And now this is a very good time to make a copy of this. And because this is not gonna be a moving part, it's just create a downward pressure. I'm going to just put a screw right through. Yeah, it's starting to feel solid. Okay, that's it, it's coming along. I'm really, really chuffed. Okay, first session complete. I've had enough for now. What we're doing is, we're setting up a little corner. I'm using my eye to measure the stick. You could use a 90 degree corner to see where, you know, where it needs to be. Then I'm basically putting a corner marking a hole, checking from the top, then I use a tile drill bit, you're supposed to use it with lots of water, but I think I'm just being a bit lazy, and I'm not going all too deep. Okay, that means it needs more, more drilling because the plug is not going in. Yeah, you see the plug needs to be right at the floor. But I suggest we just screw them in as much as possible. Because sometimes you start hammering and it just goes sideways and it's... The only way to get it out is with an angle grinder. I mean, we could use the drill, but uh, you know, there's a drill bit here, so I'm just using that. So that's basically it. Yeah, little corners. I've measured it off the floor. Same height. I put corner, corner, and then you put spirit level uh, to get it right, if you want. Um, and then you put other corners, you just mark them, you drill them, and you put these plugs, just like I showed you, these plastic plugs. Yeah. So that's how I did it. The legs are loose for now, but what we're doing, we're setting up little corners. So now it's mounted. We just need to obviously connect it. Yeah. the head went to the side so what I'm doing is I'm hitting it like this not to you know to counter yeah, no. so as you can see like the hinge will not work here because it needs to be you know so I basically need to mark it here okay I need to make sure it's aligned here <laughs> just so uh, look, we need a plan. No, we need to align it here because otherwise it's a little step. And I don't want a little step. Now uh, without moving it. So I'm gonna basically cut it here. I'm gonna put this piece back in here and this piece is gonna open with the two hinges. Okay, so what we need to check here is this is a tricky part. At this point, can it go up? Okay, I'm already seeing it's catching there. So I'll need to make this shorter. So for now, I'm not going to worry about this. 
Okay? My main worry now is that this aligns, so it's got one curve. The hinge, so ideally I should actually go climb underneath right now. In fact, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put a, a temporary screw. If you're wondering why am I damaging the surface, this is not gonna be my surface because I'm putting another layer of the same thing over this. Now I'm gonna climb underneath. So I've got my hinge. Ah. Oh gosh, this is awkward. So the hinge has got two sides. Got this side, which basically has like that, and it's got this side, which has got a completely different vibe. Because I want my top to be go flushed, I need to do it the other way. P Patrick, P push push this down. I push it down because I'm gonna put a screw. Uh, I'm gonna put it. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna put a screw so don't mustn't go into your bum. Okay. Okay, okay, my first problem, it's catching here, so it's not lifting up. So what I need to do, ish. <laughs> I, I, I can, I, <laughs> if, I, if I trim here, if I trim shorter here, this is not gonna be in the way. So that will do its thing. You know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking we almost need a piece of wood here, and on this piece of wood, this thing will go up and down like a door, yeah, mm. from the top. This is the type of things you figure out when you're building, I, I wouldn't know. So we'll make it right and we'll show you how it's done. So this is what we found. It's, it's obviously stuck here. So why, okay, so that needs to be a little chiseled away. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna cut a little slither here, all the way, because what I'm noticing See, if I, if I, we're just gonna play with it. And uh, I mean, we can't play with it. <laughs> this is a, a, a piece. But look what is happening. If I put it like this, it's good. But I want it to be flush. Okay, so I've got a little ruler to guide me. I'm using jigsaw and I wanna create a, a straight line. Let's go give it a bash. <laughs> oh, just wait a second. I've been a pupil. Hey, Seriously? Yeah. 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 So this is what I want to show you. There is like a gap that, that that's already a, a good starting point. The gap which I didn't have before, this is what Basically what I did was I put it down, I put the plate in. So you must drill it in the center of the hole because if you drill it on the side of the hole, when you get to the end of the drill, when you put the screw in, it will actually, because of its head being tapered, it will push it in the thing. But basically I'm gonna pop that hinge up here and check it out. Ta da! And. Okay, now I can sand that. That, that, that I can sand. That's not a problem. That, that, that's really not a problem. I'm just gonna sand it. But now, that means I can have a kaka. Oh! If that broke. Ted Tedovich. <laughs> This is great! And we can take our buckets out, refill our compost with wood shavings. Oh, fantastic! And have a good head! Yeah, so now we don't have screws sticking out. And we can get our buckets. It's exactly what I wanted to get. Boom! Ta-da! 
and but I just want to more or less see the toilet seat. Got that? Actually, I'm not doing the right thing. So, so there is my toilet seat. Yeah, just just to give you a clear a clearer line. That's the toilet seat. I want to get the toilet seat over the bucket. Probably it's gonna be better if I just. Yeah, I'm it like that. And I want to be center here, so this space must be the same as that space. The reason we're going to be cutting this out is because when this lid goes down, the lip of the bucket will pierce through and dress nicely. So when you're having a wee, or especially for guys, <laughs> You don't shoot in between, otherwise the urine is going to um, get through and start to stink. Especially if the wood um, absorbs it. So basically the lip of this bucket is going to come flush into this part and no urine can ever get onto the wood. So it's for hygienic reasons. This hole will fit into my round hole. So let's go cut it. You obviously we don't want to come from the edge, so you have to drill a, a little hole. So you always check so you don't drill into some surface underneath. I love you. So what I want is I want this to be perfect. Look at that. Okay, so obviously we're gonna get our bucket to the right height so when we close this, it fits on. And obviously on the floor, so we'll need to raise the bucket because right now the bucket is this height. It needs to come up by a piece of wood. So when we raise it, we'll actually draw on the floor where to place the bucket. Yeah? So we'll have a piece of wood there and there'll be some markings. So you have to align the bucket onto the markings and then, you know, like that. That's basically the vibe. Okay, so you see that height? Need to put some wood to, you know, to make it that height. And then it's gonna be neat. So we're gonna be put it back in and then we're gonna mount, uh, cut a hole here and mount them double there, like just like that. And we'll just carry on. Okay, so if you've got, like obviously you wanna finish it, so just a little bit of sandpaper. We'll take takes all the burrs off. I think they're called burrs. And we're gonna use a bit of sandpaper because we've got two just to make it into one and blend it in. But that's a whole separate thing. A good finish. So I'm just spacing them out more or less equal so it looks nice. But all those screws are gonna be sunken in. So they will be covered with maybe a little bit of wood filler uh, so you want to see them and then you know paint it nicely um, and then maybe we'll do a little marble effect on it Zoya will have some time as we get the preparations to sell these home fully off the grid yeah I'm quite chuffed with it it's nice it's more stable um, if something is lifting up one could use a little magnet which I've got comes in nice and snug okay so how much of a lift does it need oh wow two blocks exactly okay so yeah then two blocks it is and then I'm gonna just mount them together with a screw just just uh, cut them to the size of the bucket on both sides and um, yeah, maybe even trim it so people know how to put it on. So there's a definite guide. Oh, if I put this on t these two woods exactly, then the bucket will be where it needs to be. Perfect. Now I'm just going to mount this into the floor, trim it up, and I'll guide you all the way. They can just cut four blocks this length, okay? And then put a piece of wood on top with a hole for where the bucket needs to go and then it's boom it's aligned that just the idea came to me now instead of doing some fancy cuttings there so obviously i need to first check that this piece of wood fits in trim it smaller with my skill saw 
and, uh, and then I'm gonna cut a little round hole like I did it uh, for the toilet and it will guide the bucket in. Absolutely free wood. That's it, let's go mount it on. Boom! Final check on the bucket. Maybe to make this a little bit bigger, just to when it was a sanding. Or was my Makita just to just to trim up the edges a little bit so you know so it's nice snug but otherwise so just need to tweak final little adjustments and then we're game to go okay the way I figured out is to push down and then I find the right place and I keep it down so here's the toilet 
boom, I'll just trim this up and the toilet seat will go here and voila, you can have a nice caca. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, look at that, boom, boom. <laughs> biggie, biggie. Me. Okay, I'm gonna try something really I haven't done before. To put a plywood onto the front. I bend it in the water, in the pool. Yeah, I might need to do a little split here because it's a very sharp corner um, into some strips possibly maybe have a leg at the bottom there maybe from thicker plywood or something that I can you know do a little piece replica at the bottom but I'll get to that later and but this is doing well it's a slight curvature and it's doing quite well and then I'm gonna cut it with a jigsaw the excess uh, yeah mm. I'm just going to cut the excess because, you know, I made it a bit longer because here, as you can see, I didn't get my levels quite 100%. So yeah, and I can see it's doing a little bit of a crack here, so I just need to be careful. Look, you, you're trying new things, but uh, gosh, just to show you not to be scared. So I have also decided to cut it here where the wood is, so maybe halfway so I can have this piece ending here and then you know wherever I do here will be a separate thing because this is not even bending at the sharp curve that this is starting to go at. Little irk there at the bottom, which I'm not too happy about. I'll see how I can fix it. Okay, so the challenge I'm having here is uh, I keep on missing with the screws. So what I would do different if I were you is before you mount them, you the beams that go vertical, I would just pen like close one eye and just or you know use a ruler or eyeball it or parallel, just find more or less where that beam is. I mean, it's two by two inches, but I keep on missing it. Okay, now I wanna have a spare bucket. So the spare bucket is, should you need to have a poo and the bucket is full, you wanna have a, a backup bucket here. It's a very good uh, thing to, <laughs> to have because when that bucket is full and let's say it's cold, the last thing you wanna do is run outside and you know, but now I need to have it bigger than a bucket by at least five centimeters. Plus, I need to get in to help that corner out, you remember? And you want to be able to get the wooden shavings. So, we're going to create a little compass. Yeah, that's good. That should come out, eh? Yeah, most definitely. Okay, so this is what I've decided. I've decided to cut a piece of wood for that little kink and I'm gonna do a little jip over. Ooh, but it worked. It worked, but I just, it went through to the other side. Did you see that? It was moving, the bottom corner. Okay, so that's how I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna stick a piece of wood there, pushing against the wall and that kink will come forth. I'm going to 
going to try and fix this with a little wooden stick. slip that I've put yeah and I need to make stoppers so I'm thinking like little plates or something I can install like this one two three three is an ample over here I need to put a little wall so the shavings the wood shavings don't um, don't go into this compartment this is just an empty bucket compartment Maybe keep some eco cleaning things, some cloths, it's a little storage space. Let's see the mechanics. The mechanics must be fast. Open, put, put into the guide, close. There's a big gap. And I obviously can't mount it into this thing like I did here because this thing needs to go up and down. So this is what I thought of. If I put a little piece of wood here and I mount it you know, in between these two pieces. So I'm just gonna eyeball it. Eyeballing it means you close your one eye and you can see, excuse for the shaking camera, you can see the parallel line. Yeah. The blade is blunt. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, so that's perfect enough. Okay, now we just need to screw this guy in. And I'm not gonna fuss with any corners, really. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hit it. But let's try and put it. Another valuable tool is the sander. Found some plywood, thin plywood. I'd say it's four millimeters, maybe three, four millimeters. Don't ask me what stats in an inch, one eighth of an inch maybe. So it doesn't bend this way, but this way it bends quite nicely. But this is quite solid. So, you know, I threw it in the pool, so it weighted and it worked quite well. But, for the sharp corner here, definitely won't work. So, I, this is what I was talking about. I need to have nice, something to screw it onto, because here, boom, I don't even need to wet it. It just folds nicely. Get it to where it needs to be, and I'm going to, yeah, pre-cut pre-cut the, the top part. It's okay if I have a little extra because I can always trim it down. Um, and more or less where the edge needs to be. And I'm gonna go a little extra again. Um, because obviously when I positioned it, um, well, not really, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna use my straight edge and I'm gonna cut it. Well, here, right at the bottom, I'm going to have just one corner. One corner so what I've done is I've taken this ninety degrees. You can use the ruler to make sure that this is 90 degrees, place my corner and obviously made my markings with a pencil, yeah, in the holes. So I can drill through and that will be my one corner and then that's what I'm going to screw in. Another thing, I'm going to most probably have a little piece of wood behind the corner so I can, you know, it can screw in there and through and position, make my, my plywood fuss. Because obviously, 
or you could use little bolts but no not necessary just screws and you go in so but I'll show you as I go along okay let's do it now you've seen the rest I'm gonna use the same metal corners at the bottom to position that piece of wood now corner you've seen how I've done and I'm just gonna uh, show you so I'll do all the preparations and I'll record okay let's figure out what we're gonna do here because I just need a little footing here literally go to the same level and there is a corner here so I need to go below the corner otherwise I'm not gonna get in so that's it I'm just gonna screw it in So I'm making holes so I know where the Okay Now Now I can put this block in Okay so I'm putting a block in Okay Now I can safely go So there's a little bit of a, I see that uh, that's too straight for that because this plywood bends more, but you know, that's the best I could have got. So there's a little kink. What we can do is put a bit of mesh on this and then we just plaster it, and blend in the, the, the change. So I'm putting a little spacer here, which I'll take out before I hammer the nail. So this thing can go up and down. Otherwise this thing doesn't open. Some wood shavings, spare buckets. Now the mechanics are working, which is what I wanted to show you. Boom, back at there, perfect. So what we have here is a um, container for the bucket. So when you want to make a poo poo and the bucket is full, you don't have to run outside to get an extra bucket or to empty it out. In order for this to work, we need to have another little circle at the bottom and we need to create a little cylinder out of plastic or cardboard, or like a bigger bucket if you know what I'm saying. So the wood shavings doesn't go into this compartment. So this compartment stays empty for the bucket if this is going to be for the spare bucket. Okay, but nevertheless, um, it's the same so then the wood shavings can be gotten out of here but in our case we're going to have wood shavings that can be reached out of here yeah mm -hmm. here we have an area that can easily get in and there is a guide there yes yeah, there is a guide here for the bucket so the bucket can go quickly chock and just closes. The lip of the bucket is here, 
so no urine or anything else can ever got, get onto the wood. And of course you do your thing. Um, here we've got a thin plywood and that is where I need Zoya's help. Zoya will need to make this, maybe we'll put some mesh, a piece of mesh, nail some mesh and I don't know what Zoya has ideas but we need to plaster these two together and make it into one. Yeah? Mm -hmm. The thin plywood is really easy to go around tight curves and I've made the edging. The edging, yeah, so just to trim it. Here, I had a big gap, so I had to put concrete nail and the concrete nail split the edging. Palamalsia, look at the Palamalsia. So some wood filler, I don't know, Zoe needs to put some magic <laughs> to make this. Um, and the edging here goes up and down with it. Yeah? So here we'll also need to think of some magic, but just maybe paint it underneath. Uh, vacuum the sawdust, paint it underneath because we cannot put wood here. If we put a wood here, this thing gets stuck. Все это можно сделать. Скажи, что за маской по дереву или силиконом, и то и другое хорошо. Yeah, so Zoya suggests some silicone because silicone is rubbery. Um, yeah, or a wood filler. But the key is that this thing opens. So when you do your wood filler, you need to make sure that it still opens. So that's it. I just need to make a wall here. A wall here out of plywood so the wood shavings don't go into this compartment. And otherwise, the job is done. Thank you. It's a perfect composting toilet um, which doesn't use any water and there is no smell. You get just cheap wood sawdust. Sawdust is the best filter. The microscopic sawdust, when you have poo, wee, there's no smell. When you come back uh, with fresh bucket, you rinse it. When you rinse the bucket, make sure you sprinkle some sawdust on the walls and on the floor. That makes sure that your poo does not get stuck to the walls of the bucket. And here is a part that I was really scared to do because I've never done it. <laughs> I'm using the glue for moldings. It's probably I just had some leftover, so for me it's not a uh, you know for me it's not a waste of material. And now it's ready to be painted after I've just given it a little sand. Here's the composting toilet, which will take with sawdust all the poo and we to the garden. So I've learned a new trick, because I need to cut out this hole for the toilet we're making, the compost toilet. And I don't have a drill, because to get in there you need to have a, you know, drill a, a, a pilot hole and then you go around. So this is what I've got thought. What if I just go, because you can't go straight in and you'll break the blade, but what if I just go gently, you know? So I just made a little footing for it. There's the corners and I'm probably going to put one corner in the middle. I'll obviously set the footing more properly, but uh, let's check what we have. Хорошо какается. Oh, yeah, that's amazing. It's good height. It's stable. Obviously, I'm going to put a nice seat here. And of course, I couldn't finish this video without showing you my latest version of a toilet that I did. Here we have a 30 litre bucket, which I find is a bit too big, but uh, it was the only bucket was that goes out wide. Um, you know, cylinder, straightforward cylinder with a lid, so you can get two of them or three of them. And if you're doing a workshop, for example, you could, you know, as one gets full before it gets thrown out, uh, then you can use the second one, just like I was explaining earlier in the video. 
but what I've done here is I've got these Russian toilets that you know they come in like this yeah and they've got an own lid um, so what I've got here is a toilet for we and then the solids of course go to a compost pile okay so I drew the two toilets and I'm just planning it out um, before I make a cut so nothing is in the way so the design uh, curvature is not uh, you know it's not gonna be touching my legs and so on that's why I've like that curve I brought it more in so we've got a nice toilet seat and what we're gonna do here is we're going to have one for solids and one for liquids because when you mix liquids and solids it becomes a whole porridge of very nasty smelly stuff but if you just got the solids and you've got a bit of sawdust and you cover that then it's really no smell and liquids can go directly to the garden mixed one to ten about this much urine you top up with water and pour it into nearby trees so this is going to be a, this is a new thing for me combining two toilets together here's two toilets that I've shown you in this video which you can build in pretty quick you know this guy took me a couple of hours not even and uh, that toilet took me a couple of days you know three four three days so it's an important aspect in the next video I'll show you how to build a water tower which becomes the water organizing module from the airships which becomes the shower stand with a bucket right on top of it which becomes the place where a pump can pump water so you can have gravity fed water to your tap so tap shower hot water geyser and of course a whole station for water organizing module and in a couple of months i'm going to be getting it ready for winter for russian winter so i'll be actually making the whole thing warm um, so the water organizing module stays warm and no the pipes don't freeze so that's what we're going to be doing in the next video after this and this is all part of our new webinars you can call it or a series of free lessons to give you a taste of the new lessons that Zoya and I are recording um, for the Buy Better course so please scroll below load your comments and support us on Patreon if you like this lesson and alternatively you can just purchase our full abundance of water or living biodome eco course going for $50 each because we drop the price to get the space ready and available for our new training to come which is a full self-sufficiency training starting on the land from scratch step by step and doing it on a no budget scrap materials so all the tasks and all the projects are available for everybody that's our main aim so as you can see in the next lesson where we teach you how to make the water tower, the whole thing cost me $100. <laughs> That's including uh, the pump, the water tower, the tank and the geyser element and all the fittings. And I got three awesome benefits. The irrigation with sprinkler you know, versus before we had to take water out of, with, from a well with buckets. Irrigation with sprinkler, a tap and the hot water shower. So that would have cost me probably two thousand dollars or three thousand dollars if i had to go and get this from a shop and it was a couple of days three four days and uh, i did it all by myself ten times cheaper with zoe's help here and there just to support some of the things when i couldn't you know hold it together so thank you for watching this lesson and taking the time and i hope you're going to build yourself a really awesome toilet for we and poo and um, yeah, of course the honors go to the Humanure Handbook, where I learned these basics from. And the offcuts from the toilet make fantastic shelves.